Give me a sense. I mean, when you're looking at the market right now, it seems like it's a tale of two investors. You've got something for the optimists. You've got something for the pessimists. Let's start with the pessimists then. Glass half empty. What do you see as concerning? Well, you're right. It really is this, this bifurcated market where we have good news on one hand and, and bad news on the other. And sometimes the good news is bad news for investors. So it's really hard then to get a, a coherent strategy, especially when you see a half a dozen or a dozen stocks drive virtually all of the large index uh, returns. So it becomes difficult, especially when you look out, you just did a hit on, on Russia, Ukraine war continues. There's still this global macro risk, whether it's there or with China, US. And we're looking at earnings that, that haven't developed and the market's selling at a multiple. That's something I think that investors are kind of glossing over. And the Fed has still not given the all clear signal. So they could we could be in for more rate hikes or stubbornly high rates at these levels. And I think so, those are some of the factors that invested, investors ignored this past month or so when we saw the Nasdaq climax with the 30 percent uh, year to date return. OK, so when you put it like that, you sound almost bearish on stocks, are you? Well, I, I, I was thinking about that as, as I was preparing here. And I think what we have to look at is eventually the Fed will give the all clear signal and they will and we will get to the end of a rate hike cycle. And that historically has almost always been bullish for stocks. My argument has been I think we front loaded some of that we will have a little bit of a shakeout. But if we look out further down the road, once we get some easing and, and hopefully we get clarity on some of these global issues, and if earnings deliver, we could have a really nice rally. But I don't think that's going to happen this summer. I think it's going to be a bit choppy. And I think investor expectations need to manage themselves. OK, you say because of the single bank risk, you prefer KRE, which has been crushed by recent bank fears. And you also like the XLI, the industrial ETF. Why? Well, f first of all, it's largely because if you want to be an asset allocator, which we are, you want to put money in the market and you don't want to be all in tech, you, you really have to diversify. And diversification has historically been a, a positive for investors. It reduces volatility. But recently, it's been diversification. Every time you diversify away from big tech in this market, it seems you're going to do worse. Last year was a slight exception, but this is a trend that's been going on for almost a decade. If we have to look elsewhere, we like industrials. We are going to have that infrastructure spend. The industrials also contain a fair amount of those defense names. And we just talked about global instability. And as far as the banks, look, no one really knows what's on the balance sheet of any one bank, what the loan portfolio looks like. I was a corporate banker for a while. And unless I'm reading all the Fed filings and I know the largest borrowers of the bank and I'm reading the loan reports myself, I'm not going to want to be exposed to a single stock risk event like SVB. So mm -hmm. that's why I think investors, if they're going to get into financials, they should look at a broad based index and diversify that single company surprise Monday morning risk that no investor really wants.